there are blessings to revival. Are we learning now? Now, please write this down if you care or listen very carefully. I wrote here the tripartite features in my study of revival. Pastor Nat, I've learned that not every move of God can be called a revival. There are people who erroneously call just any outpouring a revival. And in my study, as I have studied, as I've experienced God in the capacity he's allowed me to experience him as touching the subject of revival, I have come up with what I call the tripartite feature of a true revival. That every time there is a genuine revival, there are three things to look out for. If you do not find these features, it is not a revival. Number one, the first feature that qualifies any move, any awakening to be called a revival is that there must be a restoration of God consciousness and true spirituality. There must be a restoration of God consciousness, a restoration of true spirituality. This happens through repentance. This happens through a restoration of holiness and righteousness a renewed love for Jesus and spiritual things. If you do not find this in any spiritual move, it is not a revival. Is someone learning? The first feature of a true revival is that there must be a restoration of God consciousness, a restoration of true spirituality, a restoration characterized by repentance, holiness, righteousness, a renewed love for Jesus and spiritual things. When you find people loving Jesus, pressing for spiritual things, that is a real genuine revival. Number two, the second feature of a true revival is that there must be multiplication of believers multiplication of believers within that territory. Multiplication of believers. There must be an increase within the community of the believers as a result of massive salvation. It is impossible to have a genuine move of God, a genuine reawakening, a genuine revival. And then the number of those who are obedient to the faith is left unchanged. It's impossible. When the Holy Ghost fell in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost. In one single day, the Bible says they had 3,000 people in one day. 3,000 people. That means if we do not have the believers in America, the number of genuine believers, spirit-filled believers, on the increase, multiplying, it means there is a desperate need for revival because something happens when the power of God rests upon a people. There is a massive conversion from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son, resulting to many who become obedient to the faith. In fact, the Bible puts it this way in Acts chapter 2, when you read from verse 42 to verse 47, the Bible says, and the Lord added Daily, daily, not weekly, not monthly, not yearly. The Lord added daily as many as should be saved. And I'm praying over America in the name of Jesus that there would be such a harvest after this conference. Children, husbands, wives, professionals, that the Spirit of God will go around the length and the breadth of America, drawing many to Jesus. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. So the first feature of a genuine revival is restoration of true spirituality, restoration of God consciousness, restoration of your passion, your love for Jesus. Number two, multiplication within the community of believers. Number three, a true revival must also come with territorial transformation. Territorial transformation. This is the third feature. There has to be restoration within the community. 
a restoration of moral excellence. Are we together? A restoration of values. Then it translates to economic transformation, technological transformation. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14, I'll quote for you. The Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name. Still remember the scripture? It says, they shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. It says, then will I hear from heaven. Listen, I will heal their sins, but it would not just stop with them. I will heal their land. Territorial transformation. Let me tell you this. When a people reject God, their territory will reject them. When a people reject God, something begins to happen around the territory that makes life difficult, makes life, um, makes life very uncomfortable for the people. It is true. Are we together? So restoration of your love and fire for Jesus, multiplication of believers, and then territorial transformation. Are you learning so far? We're discussing revivals now. Now, I just want to give you three keys and then we'll pray. And this will be the areas of consideration. Number one, we're going to consider the Great Commission. Many of you may not know, but genuine revival if you, if you do not take anything, if, if this is the only thing you take from this session tonight, then it was worth your coming. Genuine revivals are connected to the Great Commission. Genuine revivals, revivals that last, revivals that speak are connected to the Great Commission. That means if you do not understand the Great Commission, that is the mandate Jesus left with the church, the mandate of world evangelization, the mandate of discipleship, and the mandate of territorial transformation. If you do not understand the Great Commission, you can never experience a genuine revival. I'll tell you, the reason why most territories and most individuals and sadly most churches do not experience awakenings, outpourings, and revivals is because there has been a deviation. Are we together? A deviation from our understanding and our obedience to the Great Commission. Now, I know that there are several things we can teach about we should build believers holistically. But in order of spiritual priority, the Great Commission is the reason why we are called witnesses. That means no matter what else we teach about, no matter what other subjects we consider, if we neglect and ignore the Great Commission, there's no point receiving any empowerment. There's no point receiving any backing. The purpose for the backing, the purpose for the empowerment is to help us fulfill the Great Commission. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The Bible says you shall be witnesses unto me, unto me, unto me. The purpose for the power is to help you become a witness. So revivals are directly connected to the Great Commission. Write this down, please. Revivals are directly connected to the Great Commission. I have studied the moves of God even within your nation. And I have found out that all who experienced genuine revival were all about the Great Commission. It is impossible to be involved in any other thing and experience genuine revival. The Spirit of God moves across a territory in honor, in honor to this global mandate of the harvest, discipleship, and territorial transformation. I know why our nation and many nations in the world are having a decline in spirituality, a decline in experiencing the power of God is because for some reason Satan has deviated us. So we have 
place emphasis on things that are outside of the Great Commission. For instance, you will seldom find the subject of souls, the harvest, the lost, being discussed in many Christian circles. It's been a campaign and a promotion of just personal comfort. And I'm not against that. There is a place for that, but it cannot replace the mandate. Are we together? If you come to my house for a visit, most likely I will refresh you. You would have something to eat and drink, but that is not your purpose of coming. If you now get distracted and we do not discuss why you came and your attention shifts to food, you've lost the purpose of coming. So prosperity and increase and breakthrough, they are wonderful, but those are supposed to be the benefits we enjoy while we serve. While we serve. While we serve. When we become distracted from the mandate, and our attention now moves to prosperity, personal comfort, how to make it. And I'm not against these things. They are part of the components for the holistic buildup of the believer. But in order of spiritual priority, we need to be restored to the mandate, the great commission. The reason why there's no backing and there's powerlessness in the church in ever increasing dimension is because we have not justified the need for that power. Our justification is not prayer. Our justification is our commitment to fulfill the Great Commission. You can pray and pray and miss. You are prayerful but ineffective because the purpose is not tied to kingdom come. Just personal gratification. Is someone learning now? I can tell you the reason why we are not seeing the move of God like we saw in the 60s and the 70s. Most of those people we call evangelists or healing evangelists, they were selfless people who were all about the kingdom. They wanted to see the mandate. People like John Knox will cry in prayer and say, Lord, give me Scotland or I die. It's not about my personal comfort. I desire to see your kingdom come. I desire to see your glory revealed. When it becomes about him and his program, when it becomes about him and the mandate to the nations, then we are ready to experience a move of God. This is a very important introduction. There are people who pray for revival. They fast over revival. They desire revival, awakenings in any dimension. But did you know they cannot articulate the Great Commission? They do not even know what it is. Why should you be anointed when you do not understand the Great Commission? Jesus said, when I sent you, lackest thou anything? When I sent you, the message is what makes the man powerful. If you don't have the message, you should not be powerful. Listen, there needs to be a restoration of the great commission. It's a consciousness that every believer must have. The great commission is not a mandate for preachers. No. The great commission is not a mandate for prophets and apostles and teachers. The great commission is a mandate to, for all believers. So when the Holy Spirit walks in you, walks upon you, he releases you, transiting you from a believer to a witness. Then he sends you. It is at the point of being sent that you receive the empowerment and you can become an agent of revival. I can tell you this, I have studied in prayer, I have studied um, by reading books and by asking the Holy Spirit many questions. Why is it difficult to birth revivals across territories? The answer is what I'm giving you tonight. Our deviation from the Great Commission is the reason why we have not seen the move of God. Are we together? Show me a man, show me a church, Show me a people who are desirous to see the lost come home. Show me a people who are passionately committed to the program of Jesus. Beyond their personal comfort, beyond the mundane search for the things that occupy us, I show you a people who are ready for revival. Genuine revival. Are we learning now? 
Do I talk of the man Billy Graham? He was a man as much as we have read who demonstrated selflessness. His life was all about the desire to see Jesus revealed. In Koinonia we say Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified. America, there needs to be a restoration to the Great Commission. We need to begin to edit the things that we teach and advocate from our pulpits and return God's people to the core, the centrality of the mandate. Beyond our personal comfort, beyond getting good jobs, as important as that is, beyond receiving favor, as important as that is, beyond receiving breakthroughs, if the entire circumference of your Christian experience is about receiving things for your personal comfort, you will not be an effective believer. In fact, you will not be a witness. Now, the average believer is self-conscious. All we want to do is to acquire, gather together as proof that God is faithful. And while that is true, it's important that we burn it in our minds even tonight that there is a mandate that is bigger than us. There is a mandate that is bigger than getting a house. There is a mandate that is bigger than getting a job. There is a mandate that is bigger than our personal comfort. God is not against our comfort, but in order of spiritual priority, the great commission, the mandate to the nations to see his glory, his power, his word, his life invade our territories. When you become consumed, oh, that's the word. That's the word. I just got it. That's the word. Consumed. Beyond being passionate, the Bible says the zeal of the Lord when you become consumed with that passion to see the lost come home, then you can be trusted with the grace that brings authentic revival. Authentic revival. We desire the healing anointing outside of the Great Commission. We desire prosperity outside of the Great Commission. We desire all kinds of things that you know, occupy our minds and occupy our pursuit. America, the Lord has sent us to bring you a message. You want to see the power and the glory of God return to America like it was in the 60s, the 70s. I want you to know that the limitation is not from God's end. He's ever ready to breathe upon his people. He's ever ready to release that grace. There needs to be an adjustment. We need to return back understanding the Great Commission. We need to rebuild the altar of the Lord. First Kings chapter 18 and verse 30. When Elijah was going to call down fire, the first thing he did was to rebuild the altar of the Lord. To rebuild the altar. Let's set our priorities right as individuals, as a nation, when our spiritual priorities are right, then we are ready for a move of God. Preachers, we must rebuild the altar of the Lord. The mandate to the nations, the desire to see God's glory revealed, the desire to see the lost come home. Jesus gave us a prayer request before he left. He said, the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. He said, pray ye the Lord of the harvest that he might send laborers to his field. America is God's field. Did you hear what I said? America is God's field. Not just because the earth is the Lord's, but anywhere the harvest is, God calls it his field. Every city in America. That means God is still in the business of reaching out to many. That includes your loved ones. That includes your unsaved ones. It doesn't matter how long they've been away from Jesus Christ. And we've been sent with a mandate tonight by the Spirit of God and by the Spirit of grace. 
And introducing this session, I'm helping you understand that an awakening, a genuine revival, a genuine outpouring, a genuine awakening, not just the name of a conference, not just the title of a meeting, an experience, a lasting potent experience begins when we are restored to the Great Commission. Tonight, we are going to take the time to pray. And our prayer will first be for ourselves. I will make an altar call shortly, but I want us to pray. The prayer is that God will reorder our priorities and that we will rebuild the altar of the Lord in our own lives.